I recently purchased a LoopDeck CT to optimize my video and photo editing workflow, but since I also spend a lot of my life recording and writing my own music, I wanted to test out how useful the remote could be for Logic Pro. The Loop Deck currently sells for 550 USD, which is very, very steep if you're looking for just a remote for Logic. You can easily find cheaper DAW controllers out there, some best sellers even half the price of Loop Deck. But that leaves room to be said for creatives who also work across many different types of applications. So if you've never heard of the Loop Deck, I'll briefly cover how it all works in this video. And if you're familiar with the hardware, sorry. But I want to go over three main topics in this video, the setup for personal optimization, the pros and the cons. And before we dive in, please go check out my most recent EP release in the description below. And here's a quick preview to one of the songs. All right, let's talk about setup. The easiest way to customize the interface for your own workflow is to start out by writing down a list of your most common Logic actions and shortcuts. Here's a list of the ones that I use every time I'm in Logic. Once I made that list, I downloaded the pre-made template for Logic and Loop Deck software. This template has the majority of shortcuts you'd ever need, but there's a lot in there that I could live without based on my own workflow. To get going, I created a new edit page within that workspace. You just search for your commands in the top left column and drag them over to the preferred controller button. There are a few types of buttons. Your basic touch commands, rotation dials, which also press in for the option of a push shortcut as well, a row that can be used for workspace switching or shortcut buttons, basic keyboard functions like undo, enter, shift, navigation arrows, and your main wheel. The main wheel has multiple pages of touch buttons already programmed. I found some of these pre-programmed actions to be pretty helpful, so I just moved around a few to my liking. You also have the option of having multiple workspaces and renaming these workspaces. So for the first one, I have editing. Number two, we could potentially change it and make it say mixing. Maybe three, you would like something for drum editing, songwriting, and so on. Let's go over some of the pros. The basic principles of writing, recording, and songwriting are right at your fingertips. Most of the time that involves scrubbing left and right, record, play and stop, creating new tracks, and so on. I know those key commands are pretty easy on a basic keyboard, but it is also nice that I don't have to think about what key command I'm looking for. There's already a dedicated button for that wherever I want to place it. Creating a new audio track is as simple as hitting that button, selecting input monitoring, double checking the metronome setting, and hitting record. The same can be said for creating new MIDI or software instrument tracks, and duplicating those tracks with all of their channel plugins as well. In terms of being focused on creating the music without the software getting in the way, it's been pretty efficient so far. Another cool note is that sometime soon a Bluetooth function will be added to the firmware, so in the future you won't have to worry about USB cables. Alright, let's go over a few cons. Since this controller isn't completely optimized for working in Logic Pro, there are a couple areas that I find are lagging at this current time. These might sound a bit like first world problems, but if I'm going to be paying 500 bucks for a controller, these are just some things that I'd like to be able to use it for. I would really like to be able to control track volume and panning information with the rotation dial, but since Logic's API isn't currently accessible for Loop Deck, or vice versa, I don't know, I'm not a dev person, you have to resort to just using your mouse. You might be able to control this with creating track automation, but I'm not 100% sure, and I don't usually work with automation a lot in my tracks. It would be nice if there was a way to control parameters within a plugin using the rotation dials, such as points on an EQ curve, mix knobs of a compressor, and so on. Since those are controlled on their own with a mouse, I'm not sure how or if that would ever be a working function, but it would be a nice touch. The only other flaw that's been the most noticeable is just relearning your workflow. It's the same as riding a bike. There have been many times I've just reached for the spacebar to play the track before realizing I have a new dedicated button for that. Overall, I've enjoyed using it so far, and I know over time it's only going to get better. So I hope this helped. 